Hey guys, welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I am your host, Amy Gardner Dean. We are on episode JL94 today. Uh, basic watercolor skills demo, a small landscape. I, I changed it to a seascape, I'm sorry. You just, you know, gotta keep everybody on their toes. So it's a seascape now. Uh, using just basic supplies. Um, everybody always contacts Jerry's and wants to know kind of what are the bare basic things I need to get into X, Y, or Z medium. We've been doing that with acrylics, right? We did it with, what do we, else do we do with color pencil, right? So now we're doing watercolor. Maybe some oil pastel next week, Amanda says. So <laughs> yeah, Amanda said, cause I was like, what are we doing next week? I don't remember. Uh, so anyway, that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, for those that are playing along at home that want to see a list of those supplies, just kind of to either look at something you see that you like, you're interested in getting into it, and, and this is kind of a good basic starter group to work with. Uh, all you have to do is type in that jerrysartorama.com search bar, JL94, and that will bring up the entire list of supplies. We will very quickly go through them here before we kind of start the episode, just so as kind of stragglers are coming in, we can kind of catch everybody and then start. Um, a great, just even more advanced watercolors would enjoy these, but beginner set are the Turner acrylic, or Turner, excuse me, artist, not acrylic. I've been painting in acrylic too long today on that mural, Katie, so I'm a little <laughs> acrylic, like, Breaking down. I'm breaking down. Yes. Yes. Breaking down with the murals and whatnot. Uh, it's the Turner Artists Watercolor. They come in tubes. This is their little set of 18. Don't let the small size fool you. I believe that they're five millimeter tubes, but Turner packs a huge punch with their watercolor. So with these little tubes, you will get a long, long way. I've got a big uh, porcelain palette at home with these in it, only half the tubes were used and I've had it for like three or four years that I've been working on. So it's something where lots of pigment packed into that, it will last you a long time. The set of 18 is the perfect way to get started in watercolors. It's normally $38.59, it's on sale right now for $19.99. So, I mean, that's the cost of what, Katie, most student grade pans yeah. are 15, 20 bucks for student grade colors that are full of a bunch of fillers that are not gonna, you know, wet immediately right away. These are tube watercolors. So, I mean, it's a great way to get started in watercolors, to get a friend started in watercolors, um, just to even supplement maybe if you've got those student grade pans to kind of get started with yeah. something more professional. Uh, the brushes that we've got, I decided with some of these kind of shows that we're gonna do, we'll do some of the try it sets so you can see them. These are the, um, the Creative Mark Mimic Squirrel Brushes. The pack of two is $1.25, so it gives you a nice little kind of detail spotter and then a really nice long kind of rigger brush. So good for really nice tight detail. Um, and you get two brushes for $1.25. Then uh, kind of going up from there, a synthetic Kalinske brush, um, the Mimic Synthetic Kalinske by Creative Mark. Now, um, I said size 14 on the thing. I thought we had a 14 over here. I ended up with the 12 <coughs> because it looked like somebody used the 14 in inks. So oh. and once that happens, it just doesn't perform the same way. You never know um, around here. No, but it's, it's, you know, made by one of our German brush makers. Beautiful, performs like Kalinsky. However, it is synthetic. Right now, that's uh, the four, size 14, which this is smaller. This is size 12. The size 14 is on sale for $17.73. So it's a good way to get that performance of Kalinske without going like $60, $70, $100 plus dollars for the natural hair. Um, they're especially great brushes. Yeah, they're great brushes. And especially if you're not sure how often you're going to do this, it's going to be just kind of more for fun. Or you want to be more serious, but you don't have the money for the super high-end stuff these give you the same performance. I've given these to people and they have not known they were synthetic and then they wanted to fight with me about it or when I told them. Or animal friendly brush. That's true. So, so we'll be using that. Um, then I really like these Polar Flow of watercolor brush sets. 
this is the regular price these aren't on sale but it's twelve dollars and nine cents it gives you multiple wash brushes so you've got like a little flat that's a quarter inch a half inch flat and then you've got a nice thicker one inch wash brush and really what the difference is in that is from side to side when you turn it the thin narrow way a flat's long gives you a nice long pull you can kind of get a nice stroke out of it a wash brush is definitely much wider that's going to pull up a lot more moisture in that brush it's going to then allow you to lay down a lot more water but the great thing about these are they've got the chisel ends so you can actually kind of scratch into the color um, you can scrape there's all sorts of different techniques you can use to use these brush ends so it gives you kind of an extra two-in-one tool with these so I like those then um, watercolor paper everybody always wants to go with just paper pulp paper that's great while you're learning but you know what it doesn't hurt to learn on something that's got some cotton content to it uh, what I usually recommend to people are the Fabriano studio watercolor paper it has a 25% cotton um, composition so it's going to cotton kind of pulls water very differently you can scrub with a higher cotton content paper or a full cotton content paper with just the paper pulp paper sometimes you'll start getting kind of pilling and lifting with that where then the paper is damaged and it does not take the color the same so the more cotton content that you can afford the better so this is a great kind of this is Fabriano's kind of entry-level watercolor paper for professionals or you know plein air painting or whatever uh, but that's their cold pressed 12 sheets price on that is $8.94 for the regular price for 12 sheets of 11 by 14. Now if you want to try the cotton to see what is the real difference, Fabriano Artistico has a four sheet trial pack. It's four pieces that are seven by 10 inches. It's only $2.25. So you can just pay just a little bit of money to get a nice sample of what the real difference is between cotton and paper pulp paper. Um, comes in this nice little kind of shade and it's got traditional white uh, hot press cold press rough and it's very nice I love this nice little I think it's just a smart little thing to yes do. oh well it's, it's the perfect way to you know yeah. maybe maybe you don't know that you need a rougher paper maybe you want something that's a softer paper it gives you a great way to try it out um, Maybe you find that the hot press with a cotton paper is a lot more absorbent than you realized, you know? So, anyway, so that would be a good way, you know, for somebody who's not used cotton paper to try it out without having to buy a pack, a whole pack of paper, right? Because usually, at least if it's a three pack, yeah. usually it's more. So, then you can try some different surfaces and not without the investment. In. We actually have a couple different kinds of paper that do that, don't we? Mm -hmm. so uh, I like, think the fluid watercolor paper uh -huh. has that. I don't know if they have it in the Fluid 100, which I think is their professional brand, but I know they do have it in the regular, and I want to say there's a couple other brands yeah, that do it as well. Of, I'd love to try it, all the try it stuff on it. And then some brands do the small paper, small paper pads that are kind of like a try it pad. Yeah. I know Yupo's got some little tiny mm -hmm. ones, so you can try that um, for a really good price. So, yes, definitely. All right, so we got those. Obviously, the brush basin the Jerry's brush washer and basin that's something we always have here and sadly mine got used with gouache too so <laughs> I cleaned it out so that nothing should come up but it just looks sad and ugly um, my favorite masking tape it's just easy to remove paper with it doesn't pull it then this palette is a great palette we're closing them out we've got a ton of them the reason I'm saying it is if you want to get on a, in on a ridiculous deal in my opinion um, that's got a got enough wells for 18 colors with huge mixing wells in between uh, it's the Paul McCormick covered watercolor palette I frankly think we're just closing them out because the price on them was it was still a good price for them before but it was higher for somebody that's new and not getting into it it's only 10 bucks 9.99 it's super heavy-duty plastic I mean that's heavy-duty nice covered lid palette um, it actually has on the back of the paperwork directions for how he makes his flesh tones in watercolor and step by step. Um, You're amazing. Yeah. Then you've got 
18 outside wells, and then you have these great big, nice, deep wells for big washes. Um, and he shows on this little thing kind of how he puts them in the wells. Um, and we do have videos that when you, if you invest in this palette, it's got the link for the videos that he shows kind of, he actually puts his in the corners and then pulls the color down, kind of like your custom mixes, Amanda. Mm -hmm. That's where I got the idea, TV8. I love that video. So, um, so anyway, this is the palette we'll be using. Um, I'm going to go ahead and load this up. Well, wait, is everybody kind of coming on and getting mm -hmm. on to the show, hopefully? Yeah. So we won't lose anybody. We're doing our weekly, where are we from? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the roll call, I love it. Nice. That's good. Hopefully nobody's had tornadoes or like super bad weather. Because that all's been going through. Can you push the palette up just a little bit? Yes. Tell you what. Let's just move this lid. Woo! And then we'll have it up higher where everybody can see it. Is that better? Got a little scrap of paper in case I need it. Now, I'm putting out a good bit because this will be... Uh-oh, I lost a tube somewhere. That was weird. Did I put it down somewhere? Oh, <laughs> here we go. Was it in your hand? I put it over there, I think. <laughs> um, I tend to put more in because it will dry and you can reuse it. And Turner re-wets really easy, so it's not a problem with with the color actually, you know, picking back up with a little bit of water touch to it. So, um, and you notice I'm filling the side. I'm not filling the bottom. Why is that? Because if I dip a brush in here, that's got a little bit of water from another color in it, water's going to go down there that could get kind of gross and icky, right? So I want my color to be up there where I can touch the color and kind of pull it away. And then if there's kind of sediment of different colors, it'll go down up under my paint and then I can just let it dry out and wipe it out with a paper towel or some maybe um, ear swabs or something like that to get the discoloration out. Almost done here. Wow, that permanent yellow is very bright. It really is. So pretty. Are you putting all the colors out? <laughs> yep. Just so they're there if I need them. I mean, you would you would use this palette anyway, so you might as well. Let's see. Let's put the orange out for the my red. Now, what Amanda would do with this is make a color chart. Wait. She would draw out a little color chart and have her little colors in the corners that they're at. Which means that you should, too. Because Amanda says. Right, Amanda? Yes. Also, I thought you said Amanda sucks. So now I was like, oh. <laughs> And then no. I realized. No. No, you, you're our, our lettering and color swatch guru. I do love to swatch. Never, you do. You always have lots of swatches around your desk, and it makes me happy. All right. Okay, so that's what we've got going on right there. We've got all those colors out, and you can see how nice and bright and pretty and happy they are. Can you say again real quick what colors you put into your palette? Okay, it's the just the whole Turner set, right? Okay. The Turner set of 18 has gone in there. There's... Chinese white, ivory black. Uh, then next to it, I put burnt umber, burnt sienna, um, yellow ochre, dioxazine, they say violet, yes, good. Maya blue, which is kind of a really pretty kind of dark, not quite Prussian blue, a greener Prussian, Prussian blue. Um, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, turquoise up here, phthalo green, sap green, Maya yellow, which to me looks kind of like um, 
I was thinking it when I squirted it out, and then now I can't think of gamboge. Um, a permanent yellow, a permanent gamboge, which is kind of this um, almost ochre yellow mix. Permanent scarlet, pyrrole red, Maya red here. So that's the entire set there. Okay. So we've got that. We will pull all this over. Just trying to see to get this in the camera shot there. Oops, that's going to be hard to get. The palette is big, Katie. It is. Um, you trying to find me? I could put it up. Mm, uh, I can zoom out a little. Okay, yeah, that's probably going to be best, quite honestly. All right, good. Hey, Amy. Yes. Do you talk about the difference between tube and pan watercolors in the original watercolor pigment episode? I believe that we did because we showed, I mean, that's, it's been a while since that episode, but I mean, I think we might've been over in the other building when we did it that might episode. Have been, um, after party. I feel like I remember it being in the after party because we were talking about the difference, like for some reason, America prefers one and Europe prefers another. Like for some reason, people over here like pans and people over I feel like, like I remember that episode. Yeah. So it couldn't have been an after party. Uh -huh. I feel like I was there for that. Yeah. What, uh, what is the original episode for the watercolor, just so I can say it? JL12. Okay, so JL12 was our original all about watercolor, and we went through every brand. All didn't of we? them. All of them. We might have just been over here when we did it. I think we just got over here. Um, so, and then we've got an after party with that as well. So, if you don't, if you, if you watch the show, and you don't have a copy of the document that's got all of the links to it. You guys paste that at the beginning of the top of our shows on both YouTube and on Facebook, guys. So it's got two different versions of that document. It's got the chronological from one all the way to now. Then it's got the easy, much easier. If you don't want to have to look at a bunch of stuff you're not interested in, you can go to what the medium is. You can go to shows that have guests if you enjoy guests. It can go to, um, like, if there's demos, there's a whole demo section. All that good stuff. So it's two different ones. The links are right in the document. You can click on them, and they will take you right to the shows. Now, just so some of you know, some of our shows were only done on Facebook early on, right? We didn't pick up YouTube until the end of this last year. However, and people are always like, they contact me and they're like, but I want to watch it, but I don't have Facebook. You don't have to have Facebook. It's set for public. So although there might be an annoying thing that pops up that says sign in to see more, just click that out, close it, and you'll still be able to watch the video. Uh, so you can still see those shows if you don't do Facebook. So those are all there for you. All of these topics we've covered at one time or another already. Now we're just kind of going in and breaking it down to the smaller nuances. So, you know, definitely hit that and kind of see what's going on. So, and some people don't realize I don't have to give you permission to see it. You can see it. I can't give you permission beyond that because that would give you permission to alter it. So there's no need to email me with asking for permission because if you've got it open, you've already, you already are seeing it. So, all right. Now, something we've never really covered about this and kind of to learn how watercolor really works. And it's, it's something that seems like it would make sense, but it doesn't. It performs very differently than other mediums, okay? Um, I was reading a book called The Watercolor Enigma by Stephen Coates. And so I ended up kind of redrawing his little cool graphics that he does that makes this just kind of make sense. So if you wanna switch to the overhead with this, Katie, we'll, we'll look at these. Okay, so watercolor works very differently than other paints. Other paints are in a binder, you put it on, it pretty much stays in that same area with the binder. Yes, Katie? You wanna push it more towards the center and I will zoom in a little bit. Zoom in all the way, okay, there we go. Is that better? Push it up a little bit. Da, da, da. There you go. Ta-da, all right. So what you've got are pigment molecules, are particles and water molecules, right? So the orange here, which in retrospect, why I didn't use blue, I, I don't know. And I knew Amanda would be like, what? Just 
because. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Amanda. I'm mm -hmm. going to apologize to you now. Okay, so we've got our water molecules in orange, all right? At root... At root... I don't know. Don't ask... You know what? I was on ladders for the better part of this morning and all day yesterday, so I'm just not functioning on all cylinders. I apologize now. Um, at room temperature, water molecules are active. When you put it on paper, some is going to soak in, some is going to evaporate, but for a little while, they're kind of moving and grooving all around your paper, okay? And especially if you don't, ha you know, you don't have your paper taped down and stuff, you may have more moving and grooving because your paper could, you know, lift slightly. All right, so then we've got the dark spots are our pigment molecules, okay? And this one, our pigment particles. The other ones are the water. These little arrows are just showing that the water is shifting, moving all around. When you get the pigments in that, they're suspended in that water, okay? They are being kind of jerked around and they're being pushed and they're being pulled and just kind of wherever that water decides it wants to go, it's kind of pulling it or pushing it or moving it out of its way as it goes to either start to evaporate, as it starts soaking into the paper. While it's still there and kind of moving around, that pigment is getting pushed and pulled. So you've got whole surface movement going on there, right? So then, as the evaporation increases, as the water soaks into that paper, which is going to happen at varying degrees if you've got, you know, paper pulp paper versus cotton paper, and depending on kind of the sizing, you're going to have it kind of work in whatever way that paper works. As this evaporation increases, the painting starts stopping. The, the particles stop moving, right? The energy slows. It starts coming to a standstill on your paper. Now, this is kind of that magic part where all of us are like, oh, I don't like what that looks like. Or you're like, that's not dark enough. Or whatever. He calls it the magic two-minute mark. If it's more humid, it might happen slower, more like three minutes. If it's if it's really dry, it might happen more in one minute, but on average, it's this magic two minute mark where the water is gonna start soaking in and evaporating and the pigment particles are going to kind of start to come to their final resting spot. And that's when people always take that brush loaded up with more paint and water really quick, right? Quick, if it's not dry yet, I can fix it. And you put it right in the middle of there, right? And then you go to kind of move it around. And then what happens? Suddenly you just added activity again, right? This is slowed. This is settled. This, this has come to a, a halt. You're trying to touch it up. You're trying to darken it up. And all of a sudden you're adding energy again. And where's that energy going to go? What happens when you drop a little bit of ink in water, right? Outward. It, it flows outward. And that's what's going to happen with your water and your pigment. And I'm only saying this because this is something that seems like it would make sense. But how many people really think about it? I was like, oh, yeah. Okay, so the water movement is going to carry the pigment out. See, our little orange particles, the water's kind of pushed it out, and then all of a sudden, the water has dried, and you're left with this nice little bloom, right, of pigment. Has anybody ever done watercolor and seen that? They have like this one little spot that looks lighter than the rest. It's because you went back and touched the brush. Dun, dun, dun. Bad artist. Okay? So just keep in mind this thing that he says. Now he's saying after that two minutes, just <coughs> leave it be. Don't go there. <coughs> now you me, no, make me cough. We got the wrong pipe. I know. <coughs> Mine is just sympathetic coughing, I think. Um, after that two minutes, there's other <laughs> techniques you can use, okay, guys, to lay water on carefully over another color without disturbing it. Those are kind of things as you start getting into painting that that you can kind of pick up and go from there. Two great books, and I, I showed them last time that we did something with watercolor, I, and I don't even think it was all the way back to 12. Encyclopedia of Watercolor Techniques by Hazel Harrison is really cool and has some step-by-step -step stuff. The watercolor, with a U, because I'm sure he's British, Enigma, uh, by Stephen Coates. That's got some great start to finish projects. And then he shows you a fancier painting of that same project, like at the end. Um, he's the one that goes into the scientific explanation. It's really cool. It makes a lot of sense. So anyway, 
That being said, we're going to play with color today. And just FYI, this is this is my Achilles heel of art supplies. Isn't it, Freda? A little bit. Yeah, yeah, this is this is my like so far out of my this is this makes doing journaling with with uh, Ophelia my comfort zone, which that's not even right. So anyway, that being said, you can do it. That's fine. We're going to just play with color. So we got this little kind of lighthouse Dealy Bob here. That's an Ophelia-ism for you right there. Dealy Bob? It's fine. We're just going to play with color. Yep. You know what? If you get stuck, you can just pull Amanda up there to help you. <laughs> to make a bigger mess. Yeah, how you doing, Amanda? <laughs> to make a bigger mess. Do you all just have you letter something fancy across I'll just let her it? Over a nice where saying. You mess up. That's right. Yeah. And then no one will know the difference. <laughs> I like that idea. All right. So especially when you're using new colors and then you haven't swatched them so you're not quite sure how vibrant they're going to be with what heaviness. I've got a piece of paper up here just so I can kind of touch it to that. I had another scrap. Where did it go? I think it's under here. It disappeared. Mm. Wow. I don't I don't know where that scrap of paper went. Here it is. All right. So I'll have it to the side so I can tell. Better to touch it to some scrap paper than to like put on way too much pigment or not enough where then you're building it up and then you're doing what? Making that grody bloom, right? Oh, every time I do watercolors, I have so many, like everything around, like the halo around it is just, you're like you're banging with a paper towel. Th thangs a paper towel, is that, is that the technical term? <laughs> it's thangs a paper towel. All right, so what we're, I think what we'll do first, I'm going to put this up here because we don't need those colors back there quite yet. We are going to work on the sky first. And by the way, I almost have the, uh, I almost have the colored pencil thing finished. I just am trying to figure out how to do the highlights in it. The beat. Yes. I'm going to touch some. First, let's get some water out here. <laughs> Maybe we're gonna we're gonna use this so we're not here all day. I use that brush for everything. Yep. That bowler glow is a good all around. Yep. Yes, it is. Can't mess it up. Okay, so I'm gonna get some of that permanent lemon and just a touch of the. Uh, I don't remember which one it is. Permanent Scarlet. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. So, and you want me to tell you what? Let me move this. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have that palette by the end of this week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you might have to fight. Well, have that exact one. Let's see, you might have to fight before, but I've got the, uh, I've got the new pants that I just made the other day, so I don't need this. All right. Okay. <laughs> I will take that. <laughs> She's gonna. All right. So I'm gonna see what this kind of looks like. How bright that is, and see that is not bright enough yet because I'm tentatively. <laughs> I'm known for not bright enough color, not fast enough. So that's why we're gonna do this and see. Okay. Okay. So that's got kind of some of that color right in the sky there. So I'm going to leave that and make a little more yellowy wash over here. Because I'm going to use both of those to. If we have questions, go ahead and fire them away because I'm just going to figure this out on the fly, Amanda. I'm afraid of. Does the cotton content in paper help with buckling? No, that doesn't have anything to do with that. That's just the water being being added to it. Um, it what it has to do with is the longevity. It's even even though uh, most papers that are that are um, wow, thank you. Um, most papers that are uh, paper pulp are are going to be acid free they still um, are going to be more susceptible to breaking down over time. They're not gonna be able to be scrubbed. Um, 
they don't have the complexity of the internal and external sizing to the degree that something like a cotton paper has, okay? Those are, are your monitors picking up the color pretty good? Because I can see yeah. it here and that, mo that monitor is still so washed out. Yeah, okay. we can see it. Okay, good. All right. Two quick questions. Yes. Um, are you using the tap water or? I am for this because we don't have any distilled water in here right now, so. So you would normally use distilled water? Um, I would, and if it was me, but that's that's me. I mean, the, the thing is, it's fine if this dries out. It's one thing if you're leaving it in big puddles of water. Yes. And the other the question other? is, does Turner's use gum Arabic in their paint? Uh, all water, gum Arabic is the binding medium for watercolors, so Turner definitely uses that. All right. Now I'm. Do you think a sponge or a paper towel is better, or do you think both have merit? Those are things that different techniques work well with some than others. Just like if you had a specific uh, paper towel brand, a generic one might not work as well as something like Bounty or something like that. So it's one of those things where test and try, see what works for you. I'm just kind of slapping this on, almost like doing water. I don't have the patience for water and we don't really have the time to wait for the water. So I'm um, working while I can feel that it's very wet. Now I'm getting some pigment pooling, but I'm just kind of pulling it along and away from where I see it pooling, if that makes any sense. All right, can everybody see kind of our first little bit of color laid on there? Yes, no, maybe so. Yeah, you can see it. Okay. I can see it here, but that monitor is just not. Okay, now there's some area that's got a little bit, some of that little bit of extra up. Almost using that brush, I've kind of wiped the excess on my shirt. It's just what I do with watercolor. We all know. It's just watercolor. It's it'll wash out. But you guys, it's Amy. It's it it is. It's not. Yourself. It's not paint that you can see. So we're. <laughs> and I've already. I've already. I've got paint all over these pants and everything else from the mural. Well, do, so. do you want an apron? All right. No. Okay. No. All right. Does watercolor generally dry lighter or darker? Watercolor is going to dry as dark as you put the. It's more matte that it's gonna, you're gonna have issues with it drying, right? Because it's not, doesn't have the resin shine. I'm doing this across here to try to kind of mimic that. While that yellow is wet and the paper's not completely dry yet, see how I'm kind of getting that. Now you guys can't tell because I could see the sheen on the paper that was there so I could tell how wet that paper was. I do think this is gonna push some of the I can see it starting to push the yellow away from the. Yeah, this stuff will come out in the washing machine, guys. The shirt. If it's it not a. Actually. It will. I also sometimes think that. But you're probably better known than that. All right. So we're gonna let that sit and dry and see kind of what happens with that. Now we're gonna work on a different place because while this is wet, we don't wanna be working right up to it unless we don't mind it kind of blooming from one end to another. Well, it's still a little wet. I'm gonna go along this bottom cloud here. It's got kind of a... Some lighter mark that I see. So I'm kind of catching dry paper and then wet paper so it'll kind of Hopefully pick up into the wet. Now, a viewer asked me about um, maybe putting these pictures that we're going to do for the episode up ahead of time, which sounds like a great idea, and that's something I can try to be more cognizant of doing. It just, this episode with other things going on here kind of 
ended up getting the picture got selected last minute and all that so this was not the week to do that sorry you would you have a blow dryer watercolor i would especially right now because i'm <laughs> impatient but i need I, the blow dryer uh, yeah, it's just people are going to have to turn their uh, sound down when we go to do it. All right, while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to work on these little houses. They're kind of in this nice little blue almost. We've got kind of a orange and blue color scheme going here. There's those. I'm going to see what this teal looks like with it. That's pretty close, but I don't can see. You can see that's getting close. I'm going to put a little of the ultramarine in with it. So just to reiterate, blow dryers are fine for watercolor, but not for acrylic. No, because the, the resin you will cut, you will buy, uh, if you dry acrylics with a hair dryer, you're going to trap water molecules under the surface and they're not going to be able to get out and it's going to make things cloudy. Plus you could have cracking, you could have other issues with it so you, you don't want to do that a gum arabic just with watercolor everything the pigment is left on the paper right with some gum arabic to stick it on that's why it still can pull up and down because gum arabic can be rewetted it's not like like acrylic and things like that all right oh. ah. i'm gonna throw it at you okay. all right so i'm gonna put this blue on these little houses here And that's, I guess that's about as dark as it really is. Houses have very dark little windows, so I'm not gonna worry about the windows can be, well, I don't have to paint around them. The windows can be painted on over the top. It's not like I have to leave white. Uh, let's see, down here the roofs are kind of that color. You guys laughing at me and my watercoloring weirdness? No. It's okay, you can. All right. Yes, I wiped it on me. It's gonna be okay. Let's see if that the dioxazine, yes. Okay, so I'm getting this kind of the same color as these blues. I'm going to steal a little pigment because it's a little dark. While this is still wet, since this brush is drier, I can kind of pick up the pigment and move it. So I'm moving it over here. And then I'm going to have that there and use this dioxazine at the top and kind of work it back into it to kind of fade it. Whoa, that got too busy. There's a little shadow on the house. And then the one behind it, much more dioxazine. Okay, what pencil did you use to sketch? Uh, an F, I believe. It was the lightest thing that we had sitting over here. So. I, I, whenever I, I'm drawing something in watercolor, if I, you know how I usually use ink, but if I'm going to draw something in with watercolor, I always use um, either an F or like a 2H or an H. What's the shelf life of a tube of watercolor paint? It just depends. Um, if, it's, if it's not been crimped well or not been, the lid's not been put on well or whatever, they can harden. The beautiful thing about it is it's not like oils and acrylics. You can cut it open with an X-Acto and use it like a pan watercolor, right? Which is kind of cool. Would you consider Turner's um, an artist quality? Yes. It is, it is a, an artist pro professional quality. It's got a nice high pigment load. I'm barely use, putting any color in this because I'm so worried about it taking off and having a life of its own. Oh, this is really hard to see on here. It looks very faint. All right, so we got the houses. Um, okay, it's kind of dry along that line, so let's work on clouds. 
now for these clouds I'm gonna it's got uh, that kind of little bit of orange with it I'm gonna try a little burnt sienna with the violet and see what that looks like just out of curiosity yeah I like that that's nice you can see a little bit of orange but without the Okay. Let's see how this is much lighter. I should have probably tried it on the uh, paper itself. But we don't want this to be, we can come back and kind of add on. I don't want to miss my window here of it at least being even. Amanda, were you chuckling at me going, oh, my lament? No, I was just thinking <laughs> that I'm a big nerd and I'm probably going to try to do this tonight when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> we should do more pumpkins. I do love my pumpkins. Can you make me a galaxy pumpkin? A galaxy mm -hmm. pumpkin. <laughs> oh boy. All right, I'm starting to set up so let's get this and kind of So I'm, at, I'm getting a lot of requests for comparisons of Turner to either Sennelier or Daniel Smith or Holbein. With the watercolor show that we did, we went through all the brands. We had all of them. Um, I think we tried all of them in the after party, didn't we? Mm -hmm. So we talk about all that different stuff from student grade on up. So I mean, it's, it's pretty all-inclusive of information. So um, that's really the best because then you can see it in the video where it actually shows that with the, with the, um, you know, in real time, the colors and stuff being used. When did we do the ones where I put all the yellows out and touched them? All the, uh, um, the, um, all the yellow watercolors. Was that that one? That was the pigment episode that we did. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what to do with this rock. In the back, it's much fainter. So I put dioxine violet, a little bit of burnt umber, and some, some um, black. Let me put a little bit more black in. And again, if you're just tuning in, we've got um, a document that's got all the shows that we've done. And we're talking about with the watercolor episode that we did, we did it was JL12, and it's got an after party on YouTube as well. I'm trying to find it. I mean, uh, and it's one of the old... Oh, you're trying to see if it did have an after party? Yeah. I, can't, I can't remember. It's not on my list, but that doesn't mean I didn't miss one. I'm looking at it right now. Okay, I can't, I can't remember. I know, so many of them. I know that we did the... I think we used all the watercolors so you could see them being used. Okay, so when you're doing this, you want your... Um, kind of back in the back needs to be less saturated and softer because that helps kind of with it falling back in the front as you get further up more sat more saturated brighter bolder that's typical for landscape stuff all right so that's like that so we need to darken that up for our rocks up front let's try to get our rock in and our Okay, I've got dioxine violet with a little bit of that burnt umber still in there and some black. And it's still not dark enough, so. But I'm hesitant to add a lot for fear of overdoing it here. Okay, that's getting darker. I'm gonna add some more black. Are there any other questions as we're rolling along with this, guys? Not yet. Okay. Make sure I've got enough 
for my rock. I'm gonna do the little mm, I'm not gonna do the lighthouse yet because it looks like that's the it's still wet up in here and I do not want to add that with it for fear it will kind of go pulling out I'm gonna go right up to the base of that house though now I know that I've got that kind of two minutes to work with right so I'm gonna kind of move this along pretty quickly so the pigment will kind of level out. See that starting to What's that mix that you made that purpley color? It is the dioxazine violet, burnt umber, and the black. Pretty. Mm -hmm. It looks like in uh, in oil paints it looks like put mortem. Well I mean I guess in watercolor too, depending on the brand. Some brands have it as a color. Um, so if you were in the sky, when would, or any larger area, when would you choose to do wet on wet versus wet on dry? Um, you could do that. I, I was saying kind of at the beginning that I could have wet that down. It's just, it's harder for me to control. If I wet it down first, we would have had to sit and wait for a little while to get it to a point of where there wasn't that extra shine kind mm -hmm. of on it. So that's why I just did it. it. Since this is such a small piece, it wasn't as big of a deal to just do it wet on wet. The bigger you go, usually you have to do kind of more wet on wet work with an, a large area. Um, also, it's going to be way like fuzzier if you get wet on wet. And yes. Well, yeah, it depends. If that's what you're looking for. Yeah. Well, it depends on the paper tooth mm -hmm. and the color and, you know, but you could, you could be using bigger, bolder stuff. All right. So we got that in there. Um, I feel like we should dry it because I'm kind of left with not a lot of options for how are we doing on time, Katie. We've got about 10 minutes left. Okay. Um, <laughs> Hair dryer should be working. You know what? We can do the clouds up in the top here. I did this one section and then forgot that poor little guy right. Oh, I think it was too wet there. All right. All right. So we did what the burnt sienna and the violet for that upper part, didn't we? That looks about right. Yep. Okay. So I like that. So we're going to pull that back in here. So good bunch up. funny I have not worked on paper that's got paper pulp in it for some time and when I put it on I was like that's, that doesn't feel right because <laughs> I'm just not used to the how it, it takes well, it takes a minute for it to start soaking in where cotton like immediately grabs on mm -hmm. and it just kind of took me by surprise for a minute there's a five second delay yeah kind of kind of like that Use that to pull it over. Okay. Um, ba -da -ba -ba. Gosh, I'm gonna try this and we'll see how this goes. One reason I love that brush is you get those big washes that still die. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, a tiny point. 
it makes a huge difference. Okay, I'm starting to kind of push the clouds in here. That pigment kind of want, is wanting to go extend to that pocket since that's wet enough, I can kind of pull it and move it that way. It'll probably have a little, little settle there. Beth wants to know if you're gonna go back over this guy or is it, or if it is as dark as you already want it. Um, I probably will go back over it a little bit. It's doing some things with it being um, just with the kind of that I expect from paper pulp instead of regular stuff. So I kind of have to just shift to transitioning to how to work with that. Um, it is a difference. And it's like, it's like the difference between if you uh, paint an oil on cotton and, you know, like a really very industrial basic weave, whatever. And then you try linen, it's, you, you, kind of pick one and stick with it and then when you go back to it later you're like oh, but, oh yeah okay this takes a little bit different painting skill you know and you can see here that this is kind of pocketing in these areas part of this is because the paper is kind of buckling some and part of it is just kind of in how we're pulling that along all right um let me give this a quick dry while we're uh oh, I don't see the. Oh, you plugged it in. Right. <laughs> You're awesome. It's just like. Ah. It's so uh, let me see if there's a lower setting. Yes. All right. Hopefully that's not picking up too loud for the mics, guys. We got a little bit of like excess here. I'm gonna see with this brush that I blotted out if I can pick a little up. Just to lighten it some. It's kind of cooling excessively dark. Can you guys hear me over the over it with the audio yeah girls okay good i had to wait until you were talking that's fine <laughs> yeah how important to remind them to not try it on high huh how important to do? yeah okay so when you're doing this if you've got big washes <laughs> and pigment and it's still really shiny as you're working <laughs> you do not want to turn it on high because if that's an active surface that's got a lot of movement with those water molecules, what is that going to do to the pigment that has not settled down on the paper? It is going to move it. Oh, why? That's why, even, even with this, I can see it starting to, that's why I've kind of come off of it and I'm not right over the top of it. I mean, you can get some cool techniques if you want to just put it there and turn something on full blast. It's almost like using salt, but instead you're using kind of the power yeah. of, of the air with the movement, but... That's the other thing, paper pulp dries, takes a lot longer to dry than cotton. Because cotton is, is so much more depth to how it soaks it in. You're, the, it can be damp down under, but it can be nice and, you know, drier to the touch so you can start kind of laying color on again. So it doesn't mean it's a bad thing, it's just you get used to what surface you're actually working on. Bumper 55 is asking how much water you pick up for the different areas of the painting. It just depends. Uh, okay, someone has asked how much water you pick up for the different... Do they mean like in how much you're going to want to lay down or how much you're going to pick up in different areas to pull the pigment? It, it all just depends. It's entirely up to you. If you notice it's getting too big and wet, you can take something like a sponge. Make sure your sponge has gotten wetted first and then you'll wring as much out as you can, then you can actually pick color up if it's gotten too saturated, if you've got an area that, you know, you just need to lift. If you accidentally put the color down in the wrong place, sometimes you can salvage it that way in a larger area, but it just, I, I'm not sure what, what they're actually asking, so I'm not sure where to, what to offer more than that. Drawing 
enough. So. Well, he's asking how wet the brush is before you add the pigment. It depends on how saturated you want that color or how diluted you want that color. Because the more diluted the color, the more water it's going to be in there. The more saturated the color, the less water is going to be in there. And it depends on if you're trying to mix a really large area. If you've got, if you can see in this little pool here, I was going to, knew I was going to go larger. It's better to mix more than not enough to be able to make sure there's enough to cover that. But for something smaller, I was just gonna mix a small area just and test it out because there's no reason to mix that extra. So it's you have to you have to play around with it. That's why it's good to have scrap paper. If you mess paintings up and you're not gonna use them, take the back. You can still put color over the back to see how that works when you're going along. You can actually take the front and learn to glaze and layer color over existing color it's not that it can't be kept and used as a working tool. It doesn't need to go to the burn bin or uh, stomped on. Not that I've not ever not done that, but just it's a valuable teaching tool. Keep it <laughs> if you've got the room. All right. So let's see. We've got our little lighthouse thing. I think it's dry enough to put that on there. Do we have any other questions? Let's go ahead and get the questions in since it's getting close to kind of the end. Okay. Well, if you've got any questions, go ahead and submit them now. And this is. Do you want to tell them about uh, other YouTube? Yes. Okay. And so. Contest, so if you're watching this on Facebook, you can catch the show on YouTube as well. Okay. Um, if you're uh, the the biggest problem with YouTube is I can't go back and answer questions live uh, that that were left live like I can with Facebook all right so that's something to kind of let the YouTube people know that 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 can be an issue for me now um, we also have a YouTube our YouTube channel has other things it's got Mike's prove it so it's got um, mixed, media Mondays. mixed media Mondays with Ophelia it's got um, art for relaxation oh yeah all kinds of things and some new things coming this year too which are exciting so. yes all sorts of really fun, cool stuff. Plus, uh, I mean, it's got some of our old episodes. It's got after parties that you maybe haven't seen from the episodes. It's got all sorts of great, fun stuff um, and good learning opportunities. So if you if you don't follow our, our YouTube channel, it's a good time to pull it up and follow it. Now it'll also give you alerts when we've got something new that's been posted so you don't miss out on things. The sky was that wet on wet or wet on dry? It was wet on dry. I didn't do any of this wet on wet. I just pulled up a whole lot of water when I did it um, and laid the sky down. So, all right, right now I'm just taking, I've got all this extra color for the, now instead of pointing my brush up and just laying a bunch of water on, I'm turning it on its side. So as it's laying down, Pigment, it's not lifting up a bunch of stuff and moving it around. That's the easiest way to gently be able to deposit color without picking color up while you work. Real quick, Amy, lots yes. of people are asking about the waves and how you're going to get the waves, the light and the dark. Um, with that, and, and I might be able to take some video of that and post it in the group. Um, with that, I'm going to do a light color as one whole wash, okay, across the whole waves. Then I'm going to find a color that I like that kind of matches the rocks in different kind of lightness and darknesses. And instead of this brush, like this brush is really heavy, full of water and dark pigment, I'm going to blot that. Don't look, Amanda. Look away! <laughs> Blotting in on my jeans and Amanda doesn't like that. <laughs> I'm going to just barely pick up any color at all. This is called dry brushing because I've barely got any on there. And I'm going to run it across. Go towards them. I'll run it across. And do kind of in, in the areas that it's at. I'm not going to make every single stinking little wave, okay? But I'll pull some different stuff across. Some thicker, some thinner, some darker where it'll have that appearance as it goes back. And as you can see by the picture, there's more space between them closer up because that's closer to you. The further back, 
they're very close together so you can almost do that as a very just a little bit darker um, version of kind of the water itself so that it looks like if you and squinting helps a lot with something like this okay if you squint and look at it you'll be able to see the value changes use those value changes with the squinting to make that happen for that but that's but that's all you're gonna do is just you don't want that brush to be wet because when you put it down it's going to immediately start you know going out and away from your from your brush you want it to be relatively dry and that's even something where it might be nice to um, with that try one of these riggers try the spotter because they're really nice and small and this rigger you know draws a really nice Look at how nice and fine, I'm soaking the excess water off the paper here. You can get some really nice, long, kind of finer lines with that. You can even take one of these brushes and get my paint from underneath here. Turn it on its side and use that to go across. And that actually leaves kind of a cool, because when I'm picking it up, it's leaving a darker kind of blob of pigment as I'm going to pick it up that's nice because that gives some kind of depth to what that wave would look like okay and you can do that with any of those obviously this big polar flow uh, one that's thick is not going to be the one you want to do that with but you could use the those two flats to give you some nice variation again keep a nice little scrap piece of paper try out some of your techniques on that instead of on your actual work while you're working um, then you've kind of got it time tested or just approved before you're plopping that down there. Uh, any last questions? And I'll, I'll take some short video of this um, and I'll post it in our Jerry's Live group. If you don't know about our Jerry's Live group and you're new to us, we have our own Facebook group for Jerry's Live. Just go to groups, search Jerry's Live, that'll pop up. You have to answer the question to get in the group. It's just a fail safe so that just robotic stuff isn't trying to enter things and also you know, so people aren't just signing up 20 of their friends who don't know that, that they've been trying to get them to be in the group. Um, you know, cool to send your friend a link and say, hey, sign up. Might, maybe not cool to just sign a bunch of people up who might not want to be there. So that keeps that from happening. So then you're not just added to groups because we all know how horribly annoying that is with Facebook. So, um, so in that group, we share all sorts of stuff. I usually post artwork that uh, was done because we, we obviously can't finish something in an hour here so I'll post the finished work in the group usually a week to week and a half after the show has aired um, we also people ask lots of cool questions we get feedback people uh, troubleshoot their work I'm having problems with this or that and so people can check it out um, and you know it's a great place to get feedback and we've had people that did their drawing challenges and been posting drawings I loved that and getting feedback and so that's been really fun and cool and thank you guys that are doing that I love it um, also self-portrait contest before we go that is in voting begins on April 15th so you have up until the day before to get your entries in okay so it's called a self-portrait contest and then there's people that will paint a cat unless it's like you are channeling yourself into some sort of Egyptian princess or I, I'm not sure what God do a self-portrait it's a portrait contest um, make sure when you enter them that your work is cropped to the edge of the work don't include a frame don't include the chair with your cat photo bombing it around the side because all those get scratched before we even look at it no matter how amazing some of them may be so um, read the rules submit the work good luck and you can submit them up until the day before voting starts. So just look at the web page. Do they just, what is, what's the keyword that they can use? Self-portrait contest. Okay. So Jerry's Artorama.com self-portrait contest in the keyword it section, the search box. Portrait. Probably if they just, yeah. Probably if they just do portrait, it will come up as that. Self-portrait sure. definitely does it. Okay. It's got over $4,000 in prizes. It's one of our biggest contests all year. Very cool. So, and sadly, we're not looking. Okay. There's some good ones. Oh yeah, no, they're amazing. And I love sifting through them, paring them down every year. It's lots of fun. All right, well, on that note, we'll get this posted within the week, week and a half. 
uh, oil pastels next week. And with that one, I'm going to see if I've got time, I'm, we're going to do a cooking show style where we do the, the all the way to the finished thing and we'll just break it into sections so we can kind of move along quickly with that. That is one medium I feel good with doing. So, yeah. We'll have to Ooh. talk about Fruited Portrait. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That? You'll have to bring it in. You have to bring it You got a week, okay. Frida. All right. I have to find it first. All right. Well, so next week, JL95, right? Five. So yeah, and then five more to the big 100. So, all right guys, thank you for watching and have a good evening.